Welcome back to the workshop. This is not going to be a traditional industrial automation video. Although I am posting it on my channel, it does involve a PLC, but for like a government job. That's what we used to call the things that weren't for work, it's for outside of work. So this specifically is something that I developed to assist uh, model train uh, layout owners to give them more flexible DC analog type control over the non DCC type model trains. So let's jump in and start talking about this. Thank you for watching. Walk around throttle control of DC or analog type model trains. This is a replacement for systems that are no longer in production, such as the Control Master 20 Power Center. It's a good unit. They don't make them anymore. You can still buy them on eBay for a couple hundred dollars when they're available, but they are getting as rare as hen's teeth. There is another company out there making something similar. However, rather than you know put your future on something that somebody may not continue to offer, I've come up with a kind of a generic thing. And this is the Control Master 20 Power Center that we're talking about. Excellent unit. They've been around for a long time. I have a really good friend, acquaintance, who has six of these on a massive N-scale layout. It's just a stunning layout of incredible artistic ability. It's a all-British railway. It's all based on photos from Great Britain. He lives in Bloomington, Indiana. He has regular club meetings where they do operations, where he has you know, half a dozen people walking around uh, operating the railroad, to speak, to pick up cars, drop off cars, or wagons, as they call them, using the system. And when you look at this, if you're not familiar with this, you see the back of the power center. It looks like a phone jack, and that's exactly what it is. And the throttle plugs into that, the walk-around throttle. Well, because the layout is extensive, this gentleman, Trevor, has Trevor Jones, has run a connector from the back of this box in parallel to many phone jacks along the layout. You can run the train up to a certain point, unplug, and then walk to the next phone jack on your route, plug it back in and continue operation. The cool thing about this system was that when you unplugged, the, the box remembered what it last heard from the walk around throttle. In other words, when you unplugged it, the train didn't just come to a screeching halt. It kept on going in the direction and at the speed that you commanded from this handheld throttle. They call it a walk around, around throttle. What we're talking about here is a power supply. That's what's in that box, basically a power supply. And in the older style power supplies, you had this element called a transformer. And these things, the more power they handle, the heavier they get. When you pick up that box, the weight that you're feeling is that transformer. It has a powdered iron laminated core with windings on it as a primary and a secondary. Now, this is a full wave rectifier you're looking at. It's the center tap secondary type full wave rectifier. And this voltage that goes to that motor is solely dependent on the step down ratio of that transformer. If you had 115, 120 volts coming in from your AC power supply, on the secondary, you have something less because it's stepped down, but it's AC. So you full wave rectify it and you get a current that only one runs in one direction. The one half of the cycle is flipped. They're always in the same polarity. You get pulsating DC in a sense going to your motor. The former diagram was a full wave rectifier with a center tap secondary transformer type. This is a bridge rectifier that does not need a center tap. And we will assume that our AC power supply there is giving you the voltage that you want. And I'm throwing in just enough electricity and electronics here to pique your interest, but I'm not going into any depth. But if you look at the diagram on the bottom, you see the purple dash lines those are the full wave rectified AC. And if you follow the direction of the arrows, the green, the red arrows, you'll see that on each half cycle, the current goes the same way through the load, the green line. 
and, and the red. If you were to remember that the current flows against the arrowhead. Now I know they're showing red arrows going with the arrow, the diode symbol and green in the direction of the arrow, the diode, but that's conventional current flow. There's also electron flow regardless. The bridge rectifier will take voltage that's alternating in polarity and present it as the same polarity in those pulses to the load. The smoothing capacitor or filter capacitor, it charges up as the load draws power. You see the black line going along the ripple or along the peaks. It discharges and then another pulse comes along, charges it back up. So it says C charges, C discharges. Okay, this is a standard full wave bridge rectifier. And if you were running your train off of this, that voltage would probably be 16, 17 volts, something like that. And then you're using a real stat to control it. And then you got a switch that reverses the polarity. Basically, the zero volt and plus volt that you see on the load, that would use a double pull, double throw toggle switch to flip the polarity that's going the opposite way through the load. But the voltage coming out of the power supply, it, it doesn't change just how the load's connected to get your locomotive to go forward or reverse. Then you can add, if you want, and I know this says 230 volts AC in, don't worry about that. It, it's just a transformer T1 and coming out of the secondary there, it would be a step down and going through a full wave bridge to a filler capacitor C5, but IC2 is a voltage regulator. Coming out of that voltage regular, regulator on pin three is going to be a regulated 12 volt DC output. That's just this circuit. Okay, again, this is a standard type power supply. This is not what we're doing. We're eliminating the transformer and we're going to a switching type power supply. Okay, now this is the back of the uh, model control master 20 hobby transformer. Now notice it says transformer. It's got a big transformer in there. And then just quickly going through what you see here, you got a controller socket to plug in that walk around throttle. And then you've got a switch for either selecting HON scale or G. That's not really necessary in, in modern electronics. And I won't even go to the reasons why they needed to do that back then. It had to do with holding current on three and four layer devices. You had to have a minimum amount of current in order to get it to fire. Okay, nudge, we're not gonna deal with that. Power on off, that's straightforward. We're not gonna talk about meter hookup and we're not gonna do 16 volts AC for accessories. You can supply that with any number of other solutions. We're talking about the track DC and the power monitor controller socket up there. That's all we're concerned with. We're gonna do this with something called pulse width modulation. Now, what I want you to notice here is that we have a fixed voltage from zero to the peak of that pulse is your fixed voltage, whatever it is, 12 volts, 15 volts, 17 volts, it's your choice. And the system I'm going to show you, you can select and vary that, that voltage, but it's fixed while you're running the train. The other element here to notice is the frequency. On a regular interval, it could be one K Hertz. It could be 14 K Hertz, but on a regular interval, we'll just make it 1000 Hertz, meaning that it's going to put out these pulses, a thousand of them a second. So the frequency is 1000 cycles per second. 1000 times a second, you see it go on and back off. The difference between the top diagram, the middle one, the bottom is the duty cycle. If you picture a light on your ceiling and you got a wall switch, and if you were able to flip it on and off many times per second, you increased how long you left it on and you reduced how long you left it off, but you maintain the same frequency. We'll just make it something believable. 10 times a second, that's still pretty fast. You turn it on, back off, on and back off. The longer you leave it on before you go back off, the brighter the light's gonna be. And there is something in your eye called persistence of vision, because remember fluorescent lights, they are actually pulsing on and off. You just can't see it because the rods and cones in your retina don't charge and discharge that fast. 
even though it's blinking, you don't see it. Okay. Duty cycle is how long it's on during that one thousandth of a second interval. These pulses are a thousandth of a second apart, but in the top one, we're leaving it on for half of that one thousandth of a second. And then in the next one for three quarters of that thousandth of a second. And then the bottom one for 25% or one quarter of the duty cycle. That's how we control what goes to the locomotive. Now, the locomotive itself is a DC motor and it is an inductive load, meaning that the whole motor is really a permanent magnet and a coil, a coil of wire. And a coil acts in a way to filter out these sharp changes. But you're not going to do your locomotives any harm with pulse width modulation unless your fixed voltage is really high, 25, 30 volts or something, and you turn it up to 100% duty cycle, that poor little thing's going to run its heart out until it starts smoking and that's all she wrote. That's all pulse width modulation is. It's not rocket science. It's real straightforward. But what you're doing instead of varying the fixed voltage, you know, a variable voltage analog with a rheostat, it's a constant voltage, but you have a duty cycle. So you're turning it on and off at a real fast rate. And you're basically sending pulses to that locomotive a thousand times a second or whatever the frequency is of your PWM unit. It might be 14,000 cycles per second. Okay. One more time through without the other information on here, you're working with a frequency that is the, how frequent this pulse appears on your track. And then you're working with a duty cycle anywhere from zero to hundred percent, hundred percent is going to go whatever voltage your whatever speed, the full voltage is. And if it's anything less than hundred percent down to zero. Okay. This is the device that I built. Now I know it looks like a mess. This is a prototype, not a production unit because I'm, I'm not really making production units. This is is a prototype that I use for tests. And you can see the little locomotive in the background uh, chugging away and it worked perfect. I'm going to go over what is involved to build this system. And then I may add another video in more detail about the controller itself. What you have here into that switched fuse holder. Now that switch fuse holder is the same as the one in the lower right corner. And you can see that one better. So you can close it powered up and you can pull it open and you can put a little fuse in there and the one down the lower right hand corner that would be going to the track the blue and white wire is going out to my Kato track in the upper left hand corner you've got 24 volts dc from a just off the shelf 15 dollar 3 amp 24 volt dc power adapter that you plug in the wall going to this system now i need the 24 volts for the controller that gray plastic box up in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to come in with the 24 volts. And then from there, I'm going to develop the voltages I need for everything else. Well, the 24 volts then goes three locations. It goes to the PLC, the Allen Bradley micro 820. And by the way, any PLC that supports pulse width modulation will do this job. I need 24 volts to power my controller. Then I bring in the 24 volts DC to these two voltage bucking circuits. And on each of these circuit cards that have the LED display, right to the right of the display, you'll see a little blue plastic box with a, a brass screw head on it, so to speak. That is a potentiometer. And you can adjust that to take whatever voltage comes in, and you look at the flashing arrows and you look at the terminals, notice it says VN plus VN minus. So I'm bringing in 24 volts DC. And that then what's coming out the bottom where you see V out minus and V out plus, that's 10 volts and 16.5 volts. And the 16.5, that's what you adjust for your track voltage that you're going to pulse with modulate. Okay. We've got a a little bit of a circuit here that's the interface to the handheld controller, your walk around throttle. That was the real challenge of this system because when MRC or whoever designed this, what they did was they designed the throttle as part of the entire circuit that's in the black box. And then they picked a place that they could separate 
the throttle from the rest of the circuit from, by four wires because there's only four conductors, four wires coming from that throttle. And you've got to have zero and plus voltage. That's your power source. And then you got two other wires. And the most obvious thing you've got to get back is speed. And the other one's going to be direction. Everything else has to be sorted out, brake, whatever else you're going to do. It somehow has to be figured out. Also in the circuitry, down in the lower right corner down there, you see a resistor. Now, you really can't see that very well, but it's a fixed value resistance. That's my current sensor. What I am doing is I am sensing that the throttle is connected. If you disconnect a throttle, then there's no longer any current through that resistor. The voltage goes away. And my controller in the upper right-hand corner sees that, and it doesn't allow any change in the track voltage or direction to take place unless that throttle's connected and there's a voltage sensed across that resistor. Well, that was the real work, was figuring out that throttle. And I actually came up with a schematic of it and verified that that's the way that works and everything's working great. Okay, from that throttle interface, there are three analog signals fed up to the analog inputs on the top side of that programmable logic controller up there. You can't see the terminals, but you can see a few brown wires over there. So there's three analog voltages coming from that throttle interface up there. And then in the PLC, it reads those analog inputs, and then it makes decisions that are going to be fed out of the output. In this case, it's a pulse width modulated signal that goes over to this other circuit card. So you see three circuit cards here, the two voltage bucks that give you 10 volts and 16.3 by adjustment. And by the way, that 10 volts, that has to be fixed. It do, you cannot adjust it once you've got it set because that's the reference voltages that go out to the throttle. So you know what speed and everything that you want that's coming back from that throttle. But the 16.5, you can adjust that up and down to your heart's content for your specific um, track voltage that you want, G scale, N scale, HO. Everything on here can should be able to handle the voltages needed or the power needed for G scale. Well, the third circuit card that we just went to from the pulse width modulated output from the PLC goes in those three terminals there. That is a pulse width modulated signal. That signal coming out of the PLC was probably sufficient to control N scale because N scale, you know, the locomotives, it looked like they draw less than 100 milliamps, less than a tenth of an amp. And the outputs of that PLC, that can handle that. But rather than take a chance, I'm going, taking the PWM out and going to that upper circuit card. And by the way, all these cards, you can buy them right off of eBay or Amazon. That is an amplifier. I'm putting in a PWM and I'm getting out a PWM. And if you look at that board close, you see a little red LED. It says on. And right next to it, you see two power transistors. Well, those power transistors are what is controlling the actual PWM to the track. The signal comes in on the bottom terminals and then it's amplified in a sense to a higher power level. The 16.3 volts, 16.5 going to the, the right hand two screw terminals on that PWM board. And then coming out of that PWM board, you're going to a relay. And this is a double pole, double throw relay that is controlled by that PLC from the handheld throttle, when you select forward or reverse, it controls that relay and it takes the PWM, which is just one polarity, one same polarity all the time, that's coming out of the left two terminals on the upper blue terminal strip that goes into the relay and the relay is reversing those one direction then the other to go out to the track. From the relay, it goes out to the track. That fused switch terminal block and the little black connector right next to it that go to the blue and white wires, that's going out to the track. That really is the entirety of the system right there. All the rest of it is just terminal blocks for managing wiring. Remember, this was a prototype. I did try to keep it neat. I do use crimp ferrules for everything, 
but in the end, you could do this with less components. And by the way, the two circuit cards that have the voltages on them, you can buy a circuit card that does the exact same thing for less money, and it's much smaller, but it does not have a display. I like the display because I like to see what kind of voltage I'm getting. I could always put a meter on it. On the bottom terminals there, what says V out, minus, and plus, put a meter there, and then adjust that little potentiometer for the voltage that I want. Another thing that you may or may not have noticed is there are three LEDs up on the top here. The amber one, that is a power on. And then you'll see connected to that relay is a red and a green LED, not the green one on the relay itself. That kind of does the same purpose. By the way, that means it's in reverse right now. I've got the red LED on and the relay I've got set up the normal state of the relay for forward, meaning when the relay is not energized, you're going forward because most of the time you're going forward. Well, have that relay energized when you're going forward and just turn it off when you're going reverse. So all the rest of it is terminal blocks. Now what you can't see here is the PLC program. What is the logic in the controller that's reading the analog inputs and anything else and then determining what to do with the PWM forward and reverse. The other thing you can't see is the circuit. Now inside that white box, that's just a wall-mounted phone jack box. There's nothing in there. You got four wires coming out, yellow, green, black, and red. They go over to the terminal blocks right to the left. Then you got that resistor and some other, it's a circuit that in, it basically interfaces the walk-around throttle to the PLC. Now, if you don't want a system with a walk around throttle like the ones you've been using, in other words, if you want a hard, you know, with a cable on it that plugs into something throttle, then this is typical of what you would have to do if you don't want to get stuck with an MRC or there's another brand, I can't think of what it is that they're still selling. But any PLC that supports pulse width modulation, and there's thousands of them that you can buy on eBay, a used, new, or otherwise, they're industrially hardened. This little PLC here is not going to fail unless you do some serious violence to it, like subjecting it to violent lightning strikes or shorting it, and it even has some short circuit protection. That little device there says Alan Bradley on it, you will always be able to buy one of those somewhere that does exactly what this does. Then if you have your circuit figured out for your throttle, you know, that's just hardwired with that resistor down there for a current sensor to sense that it's connected. That's not going to fail. And then you got these other three circuit boards and they're all off the shelf right off Amazon or eBay. The little bucking voltage circuits with the LED displays, those are five, six dollars a piece. And the other one up Top there next to the relay, that's five or six bucks. The relay, any double pull, double throw will do. Now, this is 24 volt DC coil relay because I'm running it off of an output from that PLCs. And the standard voltage for a PLC is 24 volts DC. As I said, any PLC will do the trick. Notice also, you see there it says MAC ID, Ethernet address. This has an Ethernet port, folks. It also has an RS-232 port that we're not hooked up, but you can connect up Ethernet to this. You can buy a touch screen from Allen Branding or many other companies, and you can actually create your own screens, and you can run, let's say you had a half a dozen of these on your layout. You can connect them all up to a switch, Ethernet switch, going to the touch screen monitor, and you can go in and look and see what's going on. You can turn stuff on and off. And this PLC is a 20 IO. You see in the part number LC20? And that QBB, that's important because that designates that this supports PWM, pulse width modulation, and pulse train output, output PTO. But this has 20 IO points. We're only using uh, really three analog inputs. That means that we have another eight or nine inputs that we can use for switches and whatever else. Not only that, but you got a whole bunch of outputs left over. 
that you can use to control signals and all kinds of other stuff that you can actually control from the screen or sensors that you add. But having a PLC like this on Ethernet opens up a whole new world to controlling your DC track. You could even control MP3 files for sound. You could add sensors that see where the train's at. And plus, remember that this PLC knows what you're doing with your locomotive. It knows if you're speeding up, slowing down, or if you hit stop, if you hit the brake. Okay? It can make sounds accordingly from a little MP3 player going to a speaker, uh, especially of an Arduino type. Well, that's all she wrote for that. Maybe I'll add another one later going into more depth on the PLC. So that's as far as we're going with this today. Um, I didn't get into the PLC program or the circuit, the integration of the walk around throttle to the system. And I don't have a schematic. When I do something like this, to me, it's real, it's real simple. I know all the components. I just wire it up, test it, you know, commission it, and I'm done. So uh, my buddy, Trevor Jones, he has this running on his layout. I've actually come up with something else that is wireless that um, may also be of interest. But if you want to keep those walk around throttles, if you really like those, then you need a system like I just showed you. If there's an interest in more information, uh, I don't have schematics drawn up or any f form of the information that's distributable. So you would have to let me know if there's interest. And I'm an industrial controls engineer. That makes me building these systems cost prohibitive. I would probably have to charge four or $500 a piece minimum to build these for you just because of the labor. The parts aren't that expensive. That PLC is about $180. Okay, and the, the rest of it's not very expensive, but the labor is. If I get enough interest, people are willing to purchase the information. I will create schematics, all the explanations, and I can even offer the PLCs with the programs in them so you don't have to do any programming. We'll just see where the interest goes. So you let me know. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.